derived a nucleus, uh, nucleus in this case, so tiny for MD simulation. The second part will be how to run this MD simulation, I mean, this tiny in a box of water molecules. And finally, we are going to analyze one trajectory from one double stranded DNA in a box of water. Um, to do this, we need some programs. All the programs are already, I hope so, and they work in the class. Huh? So you have to do the, friends, the people here in this room, you have to do nothing. But if you are now online, I think some people are could be online, yeah? Yes, they are. So please, what you need to do is just to install the following programs. But there are Amber Tools 19, um, also R. We are going to just to, to plot some data using R. And also the Molecular Viewer Pymo. Also for the people that are online, just please just follow the link that you have on the, on the script. And then you will end up in the website that we have. And there you have the data set for today. So, um, the first step is just to get the data into the cluster. Um, um, people that are not here, please download it and just play around. And if you're in the room, uh, my user is, if I'm not, let's see. Three, five. Yes. Okay. So, so please copy this directory, this empty directory, into your folder. I mean, just create a working directory and then that's on you what you want to do. And then inside, you should see like three parts. Please copy it. With Minus R, so you copy also the two folder that you have inside. Everyone got the folder? Yes? <coughs> yes? Okay. So as I said, we are going to use Amber Tools. This is uh, in the, the version that we have is 19. The current version is the 22nd, 22. But for what we want to do today, it's not a problem. Um, this is a specific for the cluster. We need to just load the programs that we will need. So um, to load primal, this is the molecular viewer. You will need just to type this. You can put in your bars, RC, if you want to, not to do it every time. And also you have to load the other tools module. Um, Yeah, um, and important for PyMod, we were doing some testing before. So it seems we need some modules that are not installed with PyMod, so maybe we can also load Anaconda. So please also. <laughs> I think this is the one, yeah? Yeah. So three modules to load. The first one is Pymol. The second one, or first of all, Anaconda. Then Pymol, and then Amber Okay, you are learning for Yeah, so first of all, Python, sorry. And then Pymol, and then Amber Okay. Yeah. Everyone is there? Dear for everyone? So I will do. So I'm in the home directory. So this is what we have inside MD, the folder. So we have part one, part two, and part three. I will first of all load Anaconda, then Pymol, and then Amber Tools. Yeah. 
So let's do just a test. I hope it works. Let's just type PyMol. Oh. Let's see. Um, okay. Sí, claro. Uh, espérate que esto es Windows. So, what I did was I uploaded the other tools. It seems that, right, I mean, it's quite uh, bad. This is what we get. It's not a really good now experience of a final. So, but in the real life, I don't know if you are familiar with Pymol. Who is familiar with Pymol? Who is not familiar with Pymol? Okay. So, Pymol is like a VMD. This is just a molecular viewer. And why I'm using Pymol today? First of all, because I, I like Pymol. Second thing, because I just did some kind of small script just to automatize everything. So let's come back to the script now. We can just take a look what is in the script. And then you will need to, or maybe I can. Yeah, you need to uh, load the one-time model. Yeah, you need to 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 one-time model. Yeah, we want to just take a look at Pymol. And in the script that you see here, this is how Pymol looks like. And you have basically two windows. They can be separated or integrated. You have a really big part just for visualizing objects. You have the menu, the common uh, menu here, the window, where you have many, many options. Today, we are not going to play around with Pymol. I mean, this is something that it, it works. You can. You can, I put some links there, you can do by your own. But the important thing is just to show more or less how to visualize things. Every object that is loaded in Pymol, it's listed here like an independent object. And then you have like a five options, D, A, S, H, L, C. This is action, show, hide, label, and color. So with this bottom, you can just modify the objects how you want to visualize them. And important is that you can just click on the object and then you deactivate the object from the view. So if you want to just to have the game, the object part, you just click on it. Yeah? If you have, like, different objects there, it will be not the case today. You just click in by all, then you hide everything, or you show everything at once. Um, just play around. We are going to use Pymon later. Play around with, for example, with different um, uh, buttons. And I think, indeed, the first task to do is just to load one DNA structure. 
For doing this, we go for part one. We enter into part one. And if I list, I have like two folders. I mean part one. Now if I enter the first one, I have there like backup. Please forgive this, uh, forget this at this moment. But I have one extract that is called DNA PDB. If I now run DNA PDB with PyMOS, hope it works. And I got this ugly structure, but this is just a DNA, DNA. Yeah. As you see, because of the graphics, we have not the second window, but for us today is not a problem. So as I said before, I have here two different objects. So if I click on DNA, I deactivate. If I click back, I activate the object. Then you can play also with the mouse or so the mouse pad, click with one, one uh, finger and move the other finger. You see that you can rotate. If you click with two fingers in this case, uh, Uh, sorry. Yeah. If you just use two fingers without clicking in the mouse pad, you just go forward and backward. <coughs> so, for example, let's say just play a little, just one minute with some options. For example, action. You can just say show, I mean, preset. And then you can go to pretty action on the DNA object. I select action. Preset, pretty. And this is a way I can just generate images when I have some kind of complex, but still it's not so beautiful, yeah? Imagine that we wanna now look at the atom details of the DNA. So we can just go to H, hide, and I do hide everything. If I do hide everything. So now I see nothing. So, but I can go to show to S and I put like, for example, like lines. If I saw as line, now we can recognize this is a DNA. I will repeat. You hide everything with height, H, everything. And now you click on S and you saw lines. And now I can rotate, I can see this perfect DNA. Yeah? So are you in the login three or the login one? Login one. Okay. Yeah. 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 Another thing. So we have a macromolecule. This is a polymer. So it means I have like building blocks, like units that are repeated. And to look at the sequence, because we don't have the other window, just click on the bottom on the right. There is one S. Here, you see one S. On the right, on the bottom, one S. If you click on the top, you will see the sequence with a scroll bar. Do you see that, everyone? How I do zoom into one of the amino acids, or oh, sorry, nucleo, nucleotides. I can just click with the right uh, bottom of the mouse on the sequence, and I can just do zoom. So I do zoom in on the nucleobase. If I wanna just look again at the whole DNA, I just do double click on DNA, or sorry, not with this mouse pad. I do just zoom the whole object. The other way of doing zoom is just going to one of the residues, click on the right, and again doing um, residue, zoom. Summary. So with final, we can visualize things. We have objects that are listed on the right. We have different options of visualization. If I need to look at the structure or look for a residue, I can use this uh, sequence option just to localize. And I can do zoom in, zoom out, just going in the, in the viewer, just clicking on the right with the right button of the, the mouse, and going for zoom, residue zoom, or just on the top with the sequence. Is this clear? And, and the second thing, so I can show lines, cartoon, sticks, whatever I want, and everything I show, I can hide with the H option. Yeah? Okay, that's the only information we need from Paimon for today. So let's go for, um, let's go back to, to this.
So, everyone play around already with the DNA? Yes? yes. Do you feel comfortable? No? Okay, so, yeah, let's, let's go for the general approach. I mean, this is the system that we have for today. This is tiny. So nucleobases, that's all. I mean, just this nucleobase. I mean, they can be also neurotransmitter. They can be also hormones, some derivatives. But basically, what we know about the nucleobases, they are integrated into the DNA and RNA. <coughs> so we are going to explore whole system. So the, the first thing we are going to do is just to parameterize this molecule. We will see that it's in the stable form. I mean, not, not really, really accurate, but one of the ways that is implemented in AMPA. Then we are going to put this uh, nucleobase into a box of water molecules, OPC water molecules. Then we are going to simulate it. Then we are going to analyze the MD. After that, we are going to trace the DNA. We are going to do the same. And because this is much more expensive, we already have the data of a long time differential. But we are going to analyze it. So the first thing to, to have in mind is how I can get the structure of timing. How I can get the structure of timing? So you are theoretical computational chemist. How do you do Draw it in a geometry. You draw it with, with more to five feet. Yes. More sources for getting the structure of something. Get it from PDB. PDB. Yeah, there are many options. We can go for the PDB and go for ligands and we can download that. We can also go for the chemical, uh, the Cambridge database. These are experimental models, you can download it. You can also use Gauss view. You can use also different programs to draw. We can do this with Pymol, but Pymol is not working. So we are not going to do this today. But just uh, let me show you Moldview. I don't know if you know Moldview. That works perfectly, uh, really, really good on the, on the mobile phone. So click, please, on this on the script. Click on Molview, or go to this direction. And um, yes, do you, you accept? Is close. And this is Molview. Molview, yes, is a way of drawing in 2D, and then you generate the 3D model. And indeed, you, they, are, they, are, they have already one database of compounds, so you can, on the top, here you can write time. You can write time in here. And voila. So, of course, on the right, you have the 3D model. It's not so bad, I would say. But you see the, the three oxygens. What do you think about the optimization? Do you think this hydrogen, the hydrogen here, is optimized? Mm, it will rotate a little, yeah? So, but this is just, I mean, later you can just optimize. It's not a bad guess. It's like initial guess for your. So you can um, download this with. Um, uh, like a mole file. And we need to uh, the point is, I don't know the path here to get the uh, downloads. Okay, let's do a uh, way around. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, I don't know. I, I will need to ask to Juanjo back. Maybe. The point is, I don't know where is the, the file. But you don't want to try to drop things. I will try, but I'm not so Windows guy. I saw it's here. Okay. The point is. You can click on the folder. 
Okay. And I can draw here, yeah? I can do like... No, not there, but on the left. No, no. Yeah, it's one for here. Is for this? So, where are the archives? Where are the archives? Here. 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 Sí, sí, pero quiero bajarlo. Sí, de hecho, tú puedes ahí y va a funcionar. Ahí, pero no la hora. No, donde están los cafetitos, ahí. Ah, vale, vale. Ahí, ahí, ahí. 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 Ahí, ahí,
This is the DNA case PDB. I am there. I am part one OO structure. And there is a file that is called part one. Yeah. And then if you open at the same time in another window also the PDB, the, the PDF, sorry. <coughs> The idea is just to rename the atoms that you have in the in this structure. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. So how I know which atom is which, I can just run. I'm on. And this is the molecule. I can go to L, label, and I can go to atom name. I hide the sticks because if not, it's difficult to read the, the labels. And I saw the lines. So this is the molecule. And for example, I can just <coughs> much larger. Now we compare the two, the two things. So here you have the standard nomenclature for the atoms. And here you see what I have. I will orient in the same way. And this is what we have. So we know that uh, nitrogen one, this year it's called NO1. We know that the oxygen seven here is OO2. And why is this tedious process of changing the name of the residue? Because later we will measure some distances and it's important to do this. I know you tried, but the usual way to do this when you optimize something out of calcium, for example, and you create your XYZ or your PDB, in this case, in the PDB, the labels will be totally random. And the good thing before parametrizing is just to be really consistent. Why? For example, if you are parametrizing amino acids, the amino acids are built as building blocks. You have one N terminus and C terminus. And then with this parametrization file, the data, you create what is called a library file. This library file is defined that the N terminus is the N residue, and this is called exactly as N capital. And the ta tail, the tail, the C terminus is called like C capital. And that's why labeling the, the residues here the, at the atom, sorry, it's really important. Because if you remember, when I parameter something, I go for atom types, and I go also for point types. Is this clear? Yeah? But this is not atom types, it's atom like name, like It's the label, label. Right. The later, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, uh, we will see later it's the format of the first file. But of course, I mean, you need to know the labels to, to later get the atom types. Yeah? So how people do this? I mean, you just can just order the file, you can edit the EI, you can go through. This is what I do. But you can even in time with some comments, you can just change the name. You can if also the name, <coughs> you can work around. If I now load the other file that you have, that is the uh, edited file. So it's the same timing, point edited, point PDB. And now I do the same, so I hide the sticks, I show lines, I label the edited, the atom name, and I hide the guess. And now I compare what I have on the PDF. Cases, if I was not mistaken, should be the same. Yeah? You would think, ah, this is why this guy is telling you, but this is one of the main sources of error later. When you parameterize something, please be consistent with the nomenclature. And this is a nucleobase. A nucleobase are really, really, really well known how to, how it is. I mean, this is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Yeah. 
Okay, so. Not always, not always, because if you, if you, I mean, this, I mean, if this is from an X-ray structure, it depends on Phoenix, for example, the library of ligands on the X-ray program for fitting the electron density, they have this own library, and in principle should be yes, but you can also create your own ligand, and if you, I know, if you do by yourself, I guess some people they can just um, do in a way that is random. But for us, it's it shouldn't be random. This case is random. I mean, we have only one molecule. We don't care. But later we are going to compare with the DNA, and this is how it's uh, the nomenclature of the DNA. Yeah. Okay. Till now, boring. We are not doing really nice, not too much action, so it's not uh, not important. So how, how works deparameterization in, in AMBA? So basically, um, how can I? There are many options to run molecular dynamics. We have Gromax, we have AMBA, LAMD, et cetera. Today we focus on AMBA and why? And some people ask, so it depends on the school. I mean, there are People that they have been using AMBA, the community is really large. People using Gromax also, so everything is, should be fine. So AMBA is also a package of programs. And basically, the program that is building up the system, it's called LEAP. And we can use the, we're going to use the, the command line version. Uh, I think I'll I know, I So, this is the builder. So that means as input, what I would need to, to go or to give is just a PDV for, I mean, the coordinates. Let's call it, for example, like a PDV. I will need also to put, if I have like a molecule that is not there in the force field, I will need to give my own parameters. And in under, we have like three main types of files. The first one are the, I put in capital, but this is in more letter, dot lead. These are libraries that are integrated already now. That's exactly what I said, for example, with amino acids. I can just do like hidden blocks. And later with TILIC, I just can write the type, the sequence of a protein, just with ALA, SER, cheonin, tyrosine. And then the system will just be that by type of Of course, that will be like totally linear. Uh, the other file is really similar, but it's called the PREP file. It's really similar to the lead, but PREP file is not for small molecules, I mean, small organic molecules, something that is not yet there, I mean, it's not there in the posture. And this is what we are going to do today. So we are going to use another program that is called Antesandra. This is like a free room before going for a simulation. So Antet Samba together with Antet, the second version, uh, that is the same, to prepare this prep file. Yeah, sorry. Uh, these are the three files, sorry. With Antet Samba, we prepare the prep file. With farm check, we are going to prepare the first signal. So the first part for us is take our PDV with the correct label. We have already a bit in advance. You are in the safe side because final is not working. Um, and then we need to generate these two files here. So the prep file and the FR signal here. Yeah? Um, important, when you have the PDV, um, the important data you should have there. I will close now Pymol. I will hide this. You see here. You know. What I saw here is just I already changed it to name. The residue, this is something you can make later solve in Antetsamba. I label all the atom 
get on layers. And here, if you, I know if you're familiar with PV files, it's like a coordinate file, but you have some extra information. This is coming from X-ray, from structural biology. You have basically just the label of the atoms, the name of the residue, you have the coordinates, the Cartesian coordinates, and then you have the two extra columns. And one of them, for example, refers to the B factor. What is a B factor? The B factor is somehow the degree of flexibility in a crystal structure. It's not like that, but more or less it's related to hot regions in the program that are much more flexible compared to other regions. So you can visualize on the fly the flexibility of this degree. And finally, you have just the, the which kind of pattern type. Um, important is that when, the, when, when you go for the other PDB, sorry, I finish and then if I look at the at the initial one that I generated, look what is coming after what I said. Disconnect. Disconnect terms. And disconnect terms are obtaining the as what you are using at the standard. You are going to have really troubles on defining connectivities. We will see what is a press file. And just to find the connection tree across the molecule, it's really problematic. Please. If you do go this way, please clean up all these connect terms in your PDB before going for under So we just be deleted. Yeah. There is one one program also in Amber that is called uh, PDB for Amber. And PDB for Amber it uh, has a lot of options. You can deconnect, you can clean up, you can uh, re rename. You can also give different numbers, so it's a really flexible program. But in this case, our molecule is pretty small. No, sorry. Uh, the atom radons is just numbers. I mean, it's not the atom type. No, no. It's as in the PDB, we have no atom type. I mean, we have this atom type, but this is definitely for PDB. But we have just labels for us. So one, two, three. Yeah, the problem is we are going to compare with the DNA. That's why we need to be consistent for the comparison. Does it come included with the Amber packages? Is the PDB for Amber? Yes, everything is in Amber tools, uh, type 22. And for example, in the past, I mean, the, for going for simulation was in the path that you play with Amber, you have always Amber 22, Amber tools. But now the serial version of Samba, this is the next program, it's included already in Amber tools as well as Samba MPI, I think. So everything is there except all things related to GPU. <laughs> And we are not going to use GPU today. So then let's do the first, um, just try to get these two files, and we are going to do it together in the command line. So you see the example. Um, so we are now in this folder. All of you, you should have this edited PDB here. So now we can just go um, to the following folder, O1 antechamber. So I just went upstairs and then to O1 antechamber. And there you have nothing, you have a folder that is called backup, doesn't matter. So now it's time to load again the ante uh, Amber tools um, module. Yeah, and then we have a reader. So you can try to type on the chamber. And you have you should have like yeah, a lot of options. I mean I will do more so you see that you have a lot of the bare bones is really good. I mean you have a lot of how to go through. Everyone can run on the chamber. Does it work? Yes. Okay. So now what we do just we do as it's in the script. I mean here at the three uh, parameter files we were talking the lib, half C mode, and the prep. We will take a look later on the prep, so I will not talk about this now. And the task three is the one of generating the parameters. Of course, as you saw, the structure that we have is not optimized. We have some issues with the protons, but it's not a problem because what they usually what you do with antechamber 
the input file for under Sangha, usually it's an optimized structure plus the electrostatic potential, because we are going to do rest function. Not in this case. And you can do, for example, with Gaussian, with Orca, you can use basically PMs as well. But Amber has his own program that is called SQM, that is able to optimize molecules using the same variable. And this is what we are going to do today. Indeed, we are going to use as point charges one compatible system of point charges, but mm -mm -mm, with REST, that is called AN1 <coughs> BCC. And this is just basically running AN1 with some corrections when compared to MP2 calculations. This is cheap, we can do already on the terminal, and we don't need to use Gaussian or Ultra. So let's go together to the terminal. We are going to do the point five of the task three. So we just type antechamba, and we say it as the format of the input file minus fi is the file that is on a structure that was called timing edited PDB. Now we are going to generate, sorry. Ah. I'm sorry, I'm not really not a friend of Windows. The format of the, I don't know what. Okay. Clear. Oh, hold on. Okay, so let's see now. Structure. Okay, please follow the recipe. I, I don't know what is happening in the terminal. So. No, you can keep writing. Yeah, but. Uh, but I want to be that is clear for you that you see what I want to type. So let's type all together this, and then I will do my. my so please type Alexander minus fi. Then you have to to say that uh, let's let's do the let's do this order minus fi pdb space minus fo prepi. Prepi is that the output is a prep file, prep input file. That's why it's prepi. Then indicate the path of the file that is the input one minus i dot dot slash o o structure timing I mean ti edited pdb and then output file that is minus o and then give just the name pi dot prep then a space minus h this is atom file and write in capital amba. We are going to use Amba Atom Pipes. Space minus C, charge, model. And type BCC, this is the model I said we are going to use. And then a space minus R, N, this is residue name. And then in capital T, H, Y. <coughs> and finally, minus NC, net charge, zero. And if you press enter, you will get something like the, the screenshot that you have on the point six. That SQM is running on the, on the background. It's working. Good. Yeah? Okay. So then I will run by my own. I have it here. I will not. <laughs> oh, I need to run it. Thank you. 
So everyone got this? So no? Who is not yet ready? Who is not dead? Everyone is dead, so please execute the next program, this palm check you have in the screen, the, the options. Do you have the screen in the computer, in your computer? No? Yeah, go to palm check and execute the program. And if you see palm check, minus f preppy minus i timing dot prep minus o timing dot f as well. Okay, did you run the second program, farm check? Yeah. Everyone did the two things? Okay. So just um, there is one option that is that you can clean up the intermediate uh, files that you generate with Ante Samba. If you look how Ante Samba works, you will see that Ante Samba is just executing different programs. And this is how you, for example, you obtain the phone charges and etc. But you have, for example, the SQM file, this corresponds to the optimization of the of the of the pro, of the PDB. Now we can do now a test. We can always, from the prep file, we can always get a PDB um, with the Chamba. And the Chamba also has like running bubble, so you can just interconvert different files. So let's generate one PDB from the prep file and look at the method group that we were observing that was not uh, optimized. You don't need to do it, I will just do quickly. Oh, okay. I need to load again. So look now at the hydrogen. It's not so bad, yeah? Now you have this one is facing this lone pair of this oxygen. We have that these two atoms are not in the plane of the ring. So this is the optimized structure that SQM generated. OK, so that was just a small thing. Um, please try to look into the prep file. So let's go inside the prep file. This is what we have. It looks like a PDB, the philosophy is similar, but it has much more information than that. The first thing that you see here is three dummy atoms. 
where are these dummy atoms? Why do we need to create dummy atoms? No, why do we have dummy atoms? And we have three. And look at the coordinates. For, yeah, these are the coordinates. So I'm setting my the reference. So this is the reference for the rest of the atoms based on these dummy atoms. So the columns that we have, it's in the second column. I mean, uh, we have an order. On the top, you see that now the residue name is there because we put it on the common line. Now we have like the label of the atoms that we put there. We have the third column is the atom type in the under format. That was the one that we selected. We have now like a aliphatic sp3 carbon that is called CT. Protons or hydrogens on this kind of carbons are called HC. We have also CM um, atoms that they correspond to sp2 carbons that we have on the ring. We have H4 and NA. In this case, they are like sp2 nitrogens for the aromatic ring. Usually, they are also called like N, this N. They have also one proton or one A magnet. This is called like H. We have also a carbonyl group that is CO and etc. So we really have the atom type our atom types. The next column we have, we have is the connectivity tree. Imagine that you want to go from the, one of the atoms of the molecule to the, uh, to the end of the molecule, but connecting all the atoms. And there are options that we have now a ring, so we need to know which is the direction. So I can go clockwise or anti-clockwise. So if I go clockwise, I will define my main pathway. I will define as M those points that are connected. They are basically the main road. I will have those exits that end in just one atom and nothing more comes. They are like M points. And they are called like E. So I have main, E, sometimes I have sites, bridges. So I have really the definition of the connect a connectivity tree. If you are working with metal complexes and you are crazy and you want to do classical molecular dynamics with that, as we did some time ago, so then you will see that uh, metal complexes because of the coordination sphere, you will have a conflict. So you will need to edit by yourself in your uh, in one of the options of anti standard to edit or to define this path. Okay, then we have these three columns that are numbers, and this is basically to tell, for example, that the atom four is connected to three, three is connected to two, two is connected to one. Atom five is connected <coughs> to four, four to three, two two. And this is how do you complete this connectivity tree. Then we have the coordinates, these three columns, and then we have one column that has positive and negative values. What can it be? These are the point charges. And now we are, for example, if I am building a new library for amino acids, it's quite good that you establish that the carbonyl group and the NH, they will have the same charge as the rest of the amino acids. Here in our case, we have for the carbon a charge of 0.8. And for the oxygen, we have a charge of minus 0.64. This is not so bad. This is more or less how it is in the, in the force field of Um If I go further. Questions so far? No. Then we have also the loop. We have one green. So we, we did this tour. And then I end up in one atom that is, doesn't know how it's connected to the other one, the first one. That's why I define a closing in loop. And this is how, if you look upstairs, so you will see that the main, there are two main atoms. And now I set the C4 and C5 are connected. This is the way how I can just close the ring. And then we have this famous intropa. The intropa is, as I said, when I have a ring, I have a proton that is on a carbon, a sp2 carbon and a ring. This proton can be out of the plane of the ring, up or down. And this is how you define the intropa. This is just a little bit of Clear? Okay. Then we have a second file that we generated, you generated, that is called FRC mode. And it contains this term. For example, we have these masses together with the atom type. And we have, for example, this part that corresponds to bond. And we have some, some kind of bonds between atom types, not any more labels, just atom type. I have a value that is 331.097. And then we have something that is here that is quite curious, that says that this bond in the amber atom type 
is the same in terms of parameterization at this small C3 HC. Do you know what it is? This kind of nomenclature? This is GAF. This is GAF, generalized under force field. So that means that these two force fields are compatible. Indeed, they share a lot of parameters in the parameterization. So I have this large value, 330, and this 1.097. What can it be? Charges. Charges, this is just the bond term, how we represent bonds. Constant distance, huh? Yes, we are using harmonic, so that's why this is the first constant and the and the equilibrium distance. The same for the angle. The angle is exactly as the bonds, and then we have the dihedrals. And the dihedrals, we have some extra terms, like four, that fourteen point five, hundred eighty, and two. And if you remember. We have like different elements on the on the torsions on the on the dihedrals there. Some of them they were defining how many minima we have, some of them there was like an angle defining how many how minima we are going to have, etc. So I'm running because I see that it took uh, almost one hour for for the first part. We have the impropers as we saw before, and we have at the end just not bonded. Uh, terms that we need extra mm -hmm. for the Leonard John potential. Mm -hmm. So as you see, we have two files. The first file that is basically like a topology, topology file is telling me how the atom types are connected in this molecule by the labels. And I have the force field that is basically all the parameters I need for the topology file to get the potential energy function from the force field. With this, I'm ready to go. I have the coordinates, I have the third file, and I have the f Yeah. Um, so, congratulations, we parameterized the, the molecule. Um, sorry, because you, I mean, in the cluster, we cannot go uh, in another way. Uh, important to show you, I generated this PDB. This PDB comes from the thread file, and I generated using anti channel. I will use this PDB for building up the system. Do you realize why I'm using this PDB and not other PDB, like the edited one or the, the one that we have at the, the beginning? So we have some kind of guess at the beginning, then we edited the name, the labels, and now I generate a new PDB on the, for the optimal scale actually. So we have three. When I'm telling you I will use the last one. Do you think why I'm using that one and not the previous one? The same coordinates, but you need to be on the same, no? What is the same label? Yes, that's a really problem. Ante Chamba has some kind of issues that if two residues, uh, two atoms, they have the same label, it will change it automatically. And then later, when you build up your system, the topology, you will get one error mm -hmm. because there will be not a term for this type of this because it's not used to recognize it. Yeah, so that's why I will use this PDB file that is already defined as in the print. So I know that this PDB corresponds to the print file. Yeah, so coming back, we use anti and pump check to generate these files to start using PDB. So now with the PDB, I generated this hybrid PDB together with the print on FSC mode file. We are going to build our system in a box of water. So we are going to have our box of water, molecules, with our team in there. And the output of Philip are two files. One of them is the top topology file and the top CRD. This contains a summary of all these files. And that one is just the coordinates at this point of the system together with all the solvent molecules. Yeah? This is the second part, part two. So we move to part two. So let's go together. I'm still in part one, so I go to part two. And there I have like the three folders. I go to TLIP, the first one.
And now, if you look at the script, this is the task four. We need to generate one file that is called tilip.in containing the following options. So we are going to load the Postgres that is already there for Android. <laughs> we are going to load the specific Postgres parameters files that we created already. We are going to load our initial PDB that we are using. We are going just to put for uh, just to be sure to check how is the system if everything is fine. Then later we are going to solvate the object using OPC water molecules. We are going to take 12 angstroms from the solute to the limits of the box. And we are going to put the first water molecule close to the solute at a distance of 1.2 angstroms. Then we are going to add randomly ions to neutralize the system. You can guess our solute is neutral, so no need of adding that. But it doesn't hurt. So if you put this on your script for TILIP, automatically we will discard the addition of extra charges. And finally, I will save the parameters of the topology and the coordinates. And finally, I will create a new PDB with all the water molecules around. So finally, I just do to run this file that is tilip.in or tilip underscore thy. I just need to execute on the command line tilip by yourself. And go for that. So you can copy paste from the, from the PDF or you can type on your own. So we have, how fast are you typing? <laughs> okay, it's uh, too late. Or you can do like uh, you can take it from the backup and take just the file here and edit this file. That is already done. So please copy from backup because typing is not. It's inside O1 tilip. Copy the file tilip.in into your working directory. You have the file? So let's try. I don't know if we will work on the. I don't know if we will work on the command line. Just you type tilip. Sorry, I have to load again this. And if I now tilip minus F, tilip that in, it's failing. So what I can do is just to copy. I can just copy that. This is Windows, sorry, I need to do this. I can just run tilip and I can copy. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, and now I get a lot of errors, so. It's running in your case? Not, okay, let's go together. Let's go together. Tilip, are you in? Log into Tilip. Yeah, and write source, librc, protein, we don't need that, but this is how you load the force field for proteins, the last one, and you press enter. And then you get a lot of messages telling you exactly which kind of libraries you loaded. Then we are going to do the same for the solvent. We do auto source librc.water.opc. And then you see that we load the parameters for OPC water molecules. Yeah. Um, I will look at the recipe, not to forget anything. Then we are going to
we are simulating one nuclear base. It's also, it doesn't hurt to load the parameters, the Barcelona parameters that we have here. Sorry. Uh, DNA. Okay. This is like a DNA yeah. Yeah. So as I said, we are just simulating like a really a nuclear a nucle a nuclear base alone. So with some amber parameters would be sufficient because we have no sugar moiety. But this is mainly the three main for, uh, force fields that we will need for the DNA. So that's why that's here. So now we are going to load our um, PD our Sorry. <laughs> now we need to load our specific force field parameter files that we had. That they are in Antechamba, that is the, in part one, I think that was O2, Antechamba. <laughs> It's not there. Or? Oh, one. Oh, one, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Ante Chamba is O one Ante Chamba. Okay. So load under prep. I'm loading the prep file. And now I load the FRC mod file. Would you load those files? I mean, you have the PDF, it's clear. I mean, you have exactly the comment. Load under columns, and I specify the path to the FRC columns, sorry, to the FRC mode, and load under prep, and then you specify the path for the prep file. Okay, so now we have all the parameters we need for our system. The ones that are already in the fossil and the ones that we have. And now we just load the geometry, I mean the Cartesian coordinates that we define it. And they are in the same folder as Ante Chamba. So we just define, for example, 80, like a variable, and we, we call it like load PDB. So now we just So in my case, I have a lot of errors. Mm -hmm. So that seems the prep file I use is not the one. I um, there is a mistake. So I will take a look. Uh, 
Como que no me... Ah, si funciona, pero... Pero que te puedes escribir. No me meto en la ropa, no sé cómo le he metido antes. Es como el... No, es como el... A ver, el control, ¿no? Está a ser alto, pero... Es que pues esto se quedó todo el tiempo. Que no se termina la vida ahora otra. Se quedó todo el tiempo. Voy a probar aquí. Ok, no te preocupes, voy a crear, voy a chequear. I mean, this is not uh, what I was loading. And this is. This is also not a thing. Uh, so how far are you with the tilt? Would you just generate the topology Okay, um, I we will not insist on that because this should run on the command line. I'm sorry, this should be a straightforward, but it's not that we are fighting for small things. So this is just when you run, um, you can read if you go to the backup folder. If you go to the backup folder, you will see the lib log when running the uh, uh, TLIP, and then you get two files the top and CLD file. Okay. So, <laughs> So this is the header of the top file. So this is the header of the top file. If you open the file, it's really extensive. We have all the four three parameters already pre-computed. For example, if you need to divide the harmonic constant by two, for the first field, this value is already there. You will look, I mean, you go for the harmonic constant part and you look for the position of your atom. This is already there, I mean, for the bond, it's already computed. The same for the point angle. So this, all what you need for the topology. The other file that we have, the header, is the CRT file. That one. And that one is just the XYZ, XYZ of the different atoms that you have in the system. Coordinates in AMBA, also you can print together with the coordinates, also the velocities. And this is what you can do, and you have different coordinates with the velocity together in the same file. This is what we call a trajectory file. Of course, you can have trajectory files without the velocity. If you go at the end, if you do like a tail of this file, You have something here that is 90, 90, 90. 90, 90, 90. And this is just basically the box. Yeah? So we have now everything to go. Let's go and submit the simulation. That I hope now it works. Because if not, we will to bring something. So let's move to the folder of MD. We are in Tilip. <laughs> and these are basically the scripts to automatize the process. I really deeply hope it works. Um, I just created ABC. This is a um, simple, and then I keep it one sentence of a friend of mine from Vienna. So just execute the first of the scripts. A underscore MND. And let me know what you see. Yeah, our system, the name is THY. Please type THY. How many atoms, how many molecules do you have in the solute? You have only one, so you just have one. And then? <laughs> and then you will have 
now the folder that is created that is called ND data. If you go to ND data, go inside. You have that. You have that the script to execute the program. I mean the, 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 the simulation. You have different dot in input files for for, for Sander because this is the next program Sander, and that's all. So what I need in this folder is to have the topology and the coordinates files. So please copy the thy dot top and dot crt into this folder. This is up. So please copy the thy dot top file into this folder. The same for the crt one. Yes. So now you should have something like that. You should have what you had before and this top and CRD file, yeah? And now we are going to pray all together and we are going to submit the script to the cluster to see if it runs. So we do just sbatchmd.sh. And then we wait. Can you do this? Yeah. It's in the queue, your job? Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, I mean, the same Okay. 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 And then put bash. Sorry. First line, just put bash. I mean, Islam is not able to recognize the script. So md.sh and put bash. Yeah. And then resubmit the script again. So we do one applause if it runs, eh? Or together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's running. It's running. Applause. Sorry, it's running. <laughs> okay, so it, it will take a while. So please let's just uh, spend five minutes to look at the input file and the output file. So the first one is the. We are doing a minimization, then we do one heating step, then we equilibrate, and then we will do like a small ready production. So this is the input for the minimization. So as you, as I spoke before this morning, we can use different algorithms. So we can use different algorithms. Yeah. So here, for example, how to control this? I mean, this is a specifically you activate the minimization with this flag, I mean, equal one. So that means you are going to specify minimization as, as you may understand. You don't need to specify anymore for how long. It's not a question of time, it's a question of iteration. Then you have this max number of cycles. In this case, it's 2,000. And then you have something that is called NC100. 
this n sig hundred means that the first hundred steps you will use the steepest distance, and then you will switch to continuous gradient. And this is something that we saw this morning. This is because uh, steepest distance is not doing really a good job to find the minimum. You have also for these direct interactions for the real space, you have like a cutoff for the electrostatic to 10. Also, for the energy, so you can just compute directly there in the real space, the rest will be PNP. And different parameters. Of course, we are minimizing, we have to define some kind of criteria for the convergence. Then we are going to do a heating step. And the heating step, basically, now we need to specify the, the time step. We need to specify for how long. We need to specify the uh, thermostat. In this case, we are taking the, the width, cutting algorithm, the branching one, that goes much faster. We are putting also like a street, a random street, just to randomize the developers. And, and we are defining, of course, the initial and the final temperature. And um, the last lines that we have here, this is basically when you activate this enema option, this comes from the times where Amber was thought to refine enema data. With this, many other things came later. And this is how you can just put some extra information. So if this is zero, this one will be not reading. So but if you activate this, then you will have different options. And this is just a wrong. I want to do like this heating in two steps. In the first step, I say the first thousand steps, I will hit from 100 to 273. And then later, I will go from 273 to 300. Because if not, if I define nothing in the first step, I will get the 300, and then the system will be oscillating the rest of the simulation of the heating. Yeah? So RAMS is a really good approach to control the heating of the system. Um. Then we will do like one equilibration. One, two, one. First one is in the MVT uh, scheme. So we are just keeping the volume constant. And of course, in this case, we are not restraining the molecule because we have only one molecule in the solute. And the second equilibration will be MPT. just to have everything in constant ratio. And that's cool because you can look at the output of AQ2 uh, that odd, and you will see how the density of the system is increasing. Because you heat up the system, now you liberate a constant volume, and now you're putting the pressure. And finally, you have the propagation, I mean, just the production. And this is just a simple trip, nothing. Special when you run for this time 100 picoseconds. So you have this kind of class. This is how often you print out. For example, in this case, how you print out into the, the output, how much you print out into the trajectory file, sorry, into the RST file, and how much you how often you print into the trajectory file. Yeah. <laughs> we are using again an entity for one for for the thermostat. So let's see how is our MD simulation. So we are already, at least me, already in the equilibration step number two. But we can do a thing. I think GenoPlot is working. I hope so. Yeah, OK. So let's do with me this. Um, yes, we are going to grab just 10, even with K, just this from the output of Yeah, we want to just monitor the temperature. So if I look now at the temperature, the column is first, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So six and nine. So I can just do a Gino plot, and I can plot using this temperature file, using the column six and the column nine. And this is what I get. And we can use just um, with lines. And this is the heating up process. Um, these are the temp. Because uh, we use, and you see at the beginning, the system is artificially there, but really fast goes to around 100. We are using the weak coupling algorithm. 
controlling the temperature with this charge thermostat is not so accurate, like for example with Langevin, but this is much more cheaper. And as you see how this is not a perfect round, it's not, but at least you see that there is not like this from the beginning. Yeah? You can do the same for the total energy, for the kinetic energy, for the potential energy, or along the MB simulation. Questions about no? I mean, running the MD is just. Yeah? Um. We don't have backup for that. So let's keep it running and we are going to analyze one the trajectory of the DNA and then we will come back. So please go to this directory. Please go to the last directory. We are going, the, the simulation will take a while. So we just want to analyze the trajectory of the DNA. And there you have the following script. You have only A and B. One of them is for analysis, the other one is for visualization. So let's run the first one and just take a number. So you can take a number two, four, six, eight. You will be asked. So the first thing is just specify a number two, four, six, eight, ten. So these are the timings of the DNA. This is how it is. I mean, the DNA is like that. It's a poly DNA. So I will take number six, and that's all. So the new folder will be created that is called MD Analysis. And there you can see how is the input file for one of the programs that is called CPPTRAG. And now execute B. I remember the number that you selected. In this case, it was six in my case, I hope. Um, Okay, more problems. But it's not a problem. So the first thing is um, ay, ay, ay. Um, I mean, it's not working the PDF or the doesn't work. Yeah, that I'm sorry, that was working. So um I hope this works. Also not. Well, what what I created was basically like one script that was doing like basically four things. It was creating one PDF on the trajectory. It was measuring some distances. It was creating one PDF with R to plot everything that you have a summary. And I was creating also like a final session what view dot T and Y that you can visualize the things. And indeed, in this final session, you have already the distances that you wanted to monitor. Um, let's these counter ions that you have. Let's let's do a sum. So how 
I think you will need to download it um, because this is a PyMol view and execute PyMol view PML. And also, I have problems with the mouse, but I. Uh, but believe me, this is the DNA. Let's play the stuff. I mean, these are 10 nanoseconds of a simulation that was done in Congrats yesterday. And what you see here is just monitoring of some distances. Sorry, I cannot read from you. Of the system. And all the play, uh, we are going to try to analyze the one of the, of the high solution that I'm afraid that again. It will take a time, and I think it's not worth it that we go for individual distances and cross by ourselves, and it is time consuming. So, the main idea was this works, this is consistent, please try by your own your computer at home, you have all the data that should be really uh, fast A, B, C, and then you will have one PDF with the summary, maybe I have already there. <laughs> Yeah. So, just repeat this. Yeah, just, uh, I will repeat how I did it. So, um, if you look at the first uh, MP analysis script. What I did just basically, uh, I wrote, like, I did just echo, and I was printing in files, just the input file for CPP traf that was for measuring some distances, then running CPP traf And then the next one, the B1, the script, was basically, first of all, the input generation, I mean the PDB, then running CPP traf to get the PDB, then running PyMol, I just created the, P, the file that is called view PML, this is a way you can just anticipate the commands for PyMol and then you just load this file and then it will be exactly the same layout. After that, I just created something. I did also echo. I create the input for R. So there you can just print in one PDF, analysis.pdf, all the data. And then finally, you visualize with events. This is what you, to run R on the command line, you just type capital R minus minus slave minor than um, 4R. If you do this, then you will get this null device one. That means that everything runs. And now with events, you can just see the file that is analysis.pdf. Um, here, for example, um, I wanted to discuss, sorry, it's, I wanted to discuss how is the evolution of the distances, these three distances, sorry, four distances, they correspond to bonds, covalent bonds. And the, all the exercise was to see that the force field is not what is driving these vibrations. The oxidations are really small. Then we have also the RST. The RST is a value that is usually printed when you are doing ND simulations. Important is that when you run an ND simulation, that you are analyzing a frame that is stable under simulation conditions. And RMST, RMSF are parameters you always monitor. Then you have here the water shell around a particular residue. We were analyzing the was the number six I selected. You can compute how many water molecules you have around. Also, some hydrogen bonding pattern you have there. Of course, these are discrete values that I put the lines. This is this not like that. And then the radial distribution of oxygen of water molecules. You can get how 
how big is the water shelf around the machine. And the exercise was to compare this with the simulation that we are running. Uh, maybe we can try to generate the PDF. I don't know. But uh, it's difficult to do this. I mean, we cannot visualize the system and look at the numbers and look at the labels and try to talk about that. But this is the main idea of the NGs. You can just really generate like a ensemble of geometry, I mean, confirmations. And the top of that, you can compute many, many, many properties. And everything is automatized. I know the press the button was more or less the approach, but all the programs in MD you, you don't need to type your own script, it's already there. But of course, you're welcome to do, to do your own stuff. Questions? Did you get the main idea? Because I'm, I'm pretty sorry about the last talk. Yeah, from at the end. Is all this from our program? Or yes. This is just one PDF. You can do much more. Beautiful, you can use this ggplot2 to plot much better, but it is just a I mean, dirty way of writing our plans. So, do you do other several different portfolios? How do you know which one? It depends on the chemical species that you want to. I mean, for example, if you're running DNA, you will need to add some kind of corrections that is. Uh, one or the parameters from, from the Czech Republic, I forgot the name. But you need to correct this because some of the stuff is not so I mean, if I want to start now using this. Because, because, because for skill, it's, uh, as I said, we have two terms. One of them is uh, just the equation that we use. And the other term for four skill is uh, the parameters that are optimized to that for some particular purposes. Yeah, but the number is 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 the number Normally, you need to add more pieces yes, of the Because I was defining my molecule with other parameters. And all the parameters for the volume and the amount of times are in the general process. I would be using, for example, just gap, just loading that. In this case, I think I would use this under constraint. Because it's making it. Uh, until now, uh, which penalty score is considered uh, good enough? out there and I try to modify the rest because it's much more I mean if you want to charm you have to do by your own you have to do this in DMV time consuming but I, I, I don't know which is the mental term I usually take and compare I usually accept this yeah I was not in this situation of improving that no I just that's my personal experience but uh, I don't know if I should go on but do you have an answer about that or not no 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 it's just for my previous experience because I have for my systems I'm studying I have penalty scores and I don't know if I'm still good to keep going. But can you reproduce something? Can you reproduce any not okay. yet uh, because I'm still dealing with the errors of the program. Okay. Okay. Yeah I would say I would look for some reference and try to reproduce something and then based on that I would just adjust because parameters at the end of the day just adjust to reproduce. Uh, in the case of water solvent, we have done, but uh, if we want to do in different solvents, then how do you? I mean, there is already a lot of solvents in the phosphor. We just do instead of uh, solvate, I mean, OPC box. You can do like a methanol box. You can do like a, like a chloroform box, right? Mm -hmm. box. The problem is, if you have something that is not there, you need to define the size of the box. And then for that, you can use MacMold, you can use this Chandwee, or just to put the solvent there. 
Between between what? Philip and Sandra. Uh, yeah, Philip is the one building up the system. Sandra is just the algorithm to run MD simulation. So can you see the environment? Tilip is the way you prepare your chemical system. That you want to do protein in the membrane, you want the protein solution. And when you are done with that, and you are called the parameter, you get the topology and the coordinate values. And with this tool, now you go with the standard and you run your end. You go to the Buddha, you go to the GPU, you go to accelerate molecular dynamics, or you go to constant PH and simulation. So Tilip is just the one putting the pieces together. And um, putting all the information in this topology and CLD. I think we are we are done. You have said you want to do one. Yeah. But you know the goal. Let's let's take a look at the simulation. So. Okay, this is done. Okay, it's not working. So, um, I'm really sorry. Um, so, I think this is the, the point we are going to finish. So, just one thing in case you have questions, in case you have free time, in case you have nothing better to do, I'd like you go through the exercise on your own. And in case you have questions, please contact me. I will put the mail. Feel free, or maybe you have from, from before. Just write me a mail or ask Juanjo, and I will be happy. happy. Yeah? Thank you very much. And
Pedro usó sanador o usó este de aquí, pero tú si quieres usar el tuyo. Sí, tenía el suyo perseguiendo así, ¿sabes? ¿Cómo? Okay, so today we have uh, an additional talk because uh, the timetable was uh, so. Uh, so I happy to introduce uh, Alberto Luna. Uh, he is the head of the Center for Scientific Computing here uh, at the Universidad de Colorado de Madrid. So the place where we are running the calculations in these computer exercises. And uh, we are happy to have uh, Alberto here because he's also. Uh, representing the Spanish supercomputing network, uh, which is the, let's say, the, the, the network, the, the association, which is partially funding uh, this event. So we thank very much uh, Alberto and the, and the supercomputing center here in Madrid for the, for the support. And also we thank very much the Spanish supercomputing network for, for the funding and also the support along these uh, three years, because in theory, this course should have taking place before the COVID uh, pandemic. So we were working for three years, so we had a lot of time to prepare it. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. Thank you, Paco, and good afternoon, everybody. It's true, we have kept the money uh, for this uh, for this course, so I, I can finally uh, be happy of presenting the Spanish Supercomputing Network with this uh, fantastic um, title and uh, my name is Alberto Luna, as he said, um, and uh, I don't like uh, too much, uh, very, very much to put uh, my own photographs, so I usually change my and place my photographs for others. <laughs> this is uh, for Spanish people, I think everybody knows him. He's a um, um, presenter of a uh, concourse, a fucking test, in which uh, all the people is very clever. And uh, this uh, is the reason because I chose that this, this photograph because. Uh, in the same way, now I am surrounded by a really, really amount of uh, big amount of very clever people. That is you, um, as in this conquest, um, uh, he is the, the presenter. But if you know a lot, you win more or less. Yeah. And this is the same philosophy. So for me, I am not the clever. You are the clever. You are the smart. You are the excellent. What I do is just put the machines. We, are, we just provide the tools in order you can do the calculations. And the Spanish Supercomputing Network is uh, a big association that allows you to perform big and high performance computing um, calculations so you can have many results and publish a lot of papers. So uh, I, know, I know that you are tired in the afternoon and I have this competence. Because I noticed that the organizers, they put the hour of my talk exactly at the same of the team, España Costa Rica. So I am very proud of competing with this. Um, and uh, I know that after there is an 
and the coffee break, so it's fantastic in all the senses. Uh, you will be glad uh, to get rid of me, but I will try to be short. Mm -hmm. So the Spanish Supercomputing Network is an organization that comes from 2006. And uh, it's uh, now formed by 14 institutions. We have 16 supercomputers, and we are uh, all over the national territory, as you can see. We are one, but uh, you have in Madrid, CMAT, and you have also in Barcelona, in Malaga, and even in Canary Island. So uh, what we have done is to join these supercomputers in order to make a unique, a unique pool in which you can apply and get some specific or some big resource for big calculations. So you see that we have a combined capacity of 22 petaflops. We have a, also a big amount of storage and we provide about 800 million of CPU hours years. This is the data of 2022, more or less. And a lot of data that you can uh, check uh, with the tranquility of, of, your, of, of your desktop. Mm -hmm. So we are a member of the Spanish Unique Scientific and Technical Infrastructure Network. So we are at the level, say at the administrative level, of those uh, kind of ships that go to North Pole, North South, uh, this kind of, uh, of big uh, Alba synchrotron accelerator, etc. So, we have a, um, an access committee to come and a, a users committee also to represent the rights of the users. So in principle, you can access to these computer resources and, um, just by a competitive access. And the resources, unfortunately, are limited, but we try to increase in year, every year. But uh, in, uh, at the moment, they are, they are limited. But you have, we have a 60% of our success rate, which means that if you ask a uh, number of, of times, you know, statistically, you will have a 60% of probabilities of, of getting inside. Mm -hmm. So the criteria is scientific excellence, of course. Mm -hmm. And we have three calls uh, uh, for a year. And uh, every call is uh, allows you to come for four months. You have an access period to four months. During these four months, you can use all the resources that have been assigned to you, which is uh, several million of hours, for example. So you can use this million hour assignment in this period of four months. <coughs> so we have we are also open to industry. We accept proposals from industry. We don't have so much, but we accept. And then we have uh, pre-reserved CP hours for European projects. So if you're going to plan to have to, to ask or to apply for a European project and you're, you're going to need some uh, specific allocation of time, you can pre-reserve. And if they give you this project, you will have immediately these hours that are pre-assigned to you. And we have another small portion for novel users. With the idea of if you are not a big cathedratic, a big, uh, a big um, full professor, but you are uh, just a student or something that is starting with his own group, you have some opportunity and you have to compete with the full professor's big, big, powerful team. Finally, users acknowledge this well, in, with the papers as, as usual. We have these six scientific areas, so you have to. Uh, to put your project in one of these six, six scientific areas, astronomy, physics, mathematics, life, etc. You see that homogeneous chemistry and heterogeneous chemistry has been split in the last years because uh, we have, um, we have uh, some, um, some um, petitions uh, at the respect. So besides this computing time, we have access, which is something which is new from the the year 2020 yeah, to a, um, data save services. So we have bigger storage resources if you need that. You can combine these um, store projects with these computational projects. In the beginning, it was started with 9.3 9 petabytes, but uh, we, we want to give uh, about 34 petabytes in uh, two years. So these are different projects. It's only one call for year. And you can ask uh, to storage, just to storage, 
course, in, with the purpose of Master Sinatra, uh, between 300 and 1, and 1,000 terabytes. And these projects are for three or five years, because moving this country, this amount of, of storage is very difficult. You can take uh, about 15 days in just putting the data that you need from one node to another. So in the first call, we selected eight projects. And in the second one, we selected 12. So this is something that you can apply if you need. So um, besides, um, we organized some, uh, some events, like uh, this um, annual risk users conference, in which all the people that have been granted with, with resources and make results, uh, besides of giving acknowledgments, can present the words, can present the results on this uh, kind of uh, user conference. Mm -hmm. And of course, we organize also scientific seminars, uh, as this one that you can see, probably you are here about, and uh, this other one that have been organized in the last years. Mm -hmm. And we also organize the technical training workshops for the people which is managing the computers. So if something in Madrid is, has not a, a very great skill of managing supercomputers, you can go to Barcelona, to Las Palmas, or to another center, because they are organizing this uh, technical training workshop. So how to apply? You have to go to this internet, which is there, and this internet. And then uh, register if you don't have an account. But once you have registered, you will be prompted for uh, several things. Uh, it gives you some advices before applying. It tells you how it's working, everything. And then uh, you start a new application. And it prevents you that if your, um, if your project is related to COVID-19, you're going to have preference or you're going to have a special love for your, for your project. Because we decided in the in, in, in the in the risk council to uh, make preference to people that is working uh, in, in something concerning uh, COVID-19. So you can select if this activity is related to COVID. Then hmm? next one is simple activity title, the area that you want, or the type of application, which is can be a standard activity. I, I, know, I know that the, the letters are not very big, so probably people in the, the bottom has, cannot see very well. But I will explain it's standard activity for four months, or standard activity for the next four months for another user without previous expertise in HPC. So this splits the competence between full professor or big uh, or powerful groups or people and, and people that is starting. And this is the option for if you want to pre-reserve hours if you are going to apply to an European project. So after, you have to make a brief description of the project. This is a brief description of the project if you are an enterprise. A specific activity proposed, computational algorithm and codes that you need, and Applications and libraries, compilers, <coughs> utilities, other requested software. So you have to ask for what you are going to need. So, and then some personal data, a name, gender, institution, email, phone, nationality, curriculum vitae, name of the other researchers, relevant publications. Ask that for one publication. And then if you have contested with the curious, I will explain after what the curious is. And you have made the use term and conditions. And finally, you send your application. And uh, this application will be evaluated by the expert panel corresponding. And you will have some answer, depending on the extent of your project. <coughs> so the, the CURES, or REST Users Committee, is the organization that represents, uh, um, represents the users. So if you think that you are being uh, mistreated, and you can go to this REST users committee and complain and say, hey, my project was wonderful and I got no time. Or my project was wonderful and I was um, I was removed by a reason that I think that is not a good reason. So, Or you should uh, change the, this four months to six months or something that you think that can improve to make your calculation, to, to make your, your projects. So. 
Finally, uh, you can obtain uh, two kinds of, of, of time. If you have a class A hours, you are granted these hours, or if your project is good, but, uh, but not so good as others, you can have B hours. These B hours are granted to you if A hours are not running. So when something that got the, the A hours leave the computer empty, if you have B hours, it, it, it will enter automatically. So, finally, the REST or Spanish Supercomputing Network represents the access to inter internationalization. So, it's a way of sharing the knowledge between institutions, as you see. So, it's not only the access to Spanish supercomputing, but it's also the door to Europe. We are in the initiative HPC Europe, uh, which uh, is a uh, is concerned with the mobility of researchers, so it provides the possibility of having mobility <coughs> between European institutions. So that's all. I prefer to be short because, in fact, the philosophy, the philosophy of this is that there is a national institution, and you can apply to this national institution if your project or the project of your team is enough good. You will have this um, this uh, <coughs> computational resources granted, and of course, this is at the moment for free. <laughs> so you have here all the all the ways to contact. I will put the presentation this presentation public, so the organizers can can provide you as are, as they are doing with the, the other slides, and uh, you can you can follow in the web page uh, all the updates. It's a very clear and very nice, I think, web page. And thank you very much. Thank you for the time. So, 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 thank but uh, what I am not aware is about the terms and conditions of this mobility. I don't know if you can apply it at the at the moment or if all the budget is is, is finished. If this is this is what you're wondering. Yeah, because it has completed in April 2022. Hmm. If I right. And after that, the so it's possible. It, it's possible because the the, the proposals are made uh, every 13 years. Every 13 years. So maybe uh, now are are stopped by the, the by the lack of of, uh, of budget. But uh, the purpose is continuing that. Okay. How about GPUs? Uh, yes, I think. Uh, so I couldn't remember. I, uh, I don't know. Um, it's not here, but uh, but uh, in the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, which is the, the header of the the coordinator of, of this network, uh, they have one of these computers, which is it should be it should be here. One of the computers is uh, is dedicated to this, this computer, the famous Mare Nostrum. Oh, okay. Okay. This is Marinostrum, and this Marinostrum has a part, has another computer which is uh, which is done by, which has a lot of, of GPUs. Mm -hmm. So you can apply for both, and in the application you can apply for this if you want conventional uh, CPUs, and you can apply also for you can apply also for the GPUs. So. Um, but we need to apply directly to the rest, not like for Marinostrum, like different. I saw already it's, 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 a, it's a unique window. So if you apply and you say that you need GPUs, they're going to send you to Barcelona. If not, if you say that you need only CPUs, you probably will go to Barcelona if they, if they have the, the biggest resources. But if it's a, not, a, a very big project, a very demanding project, you can come to here, to Madrid, or to Malaga, or, or to other, other nodes. So the powerful nodes are this is the most powerful, and you have Cesna, which is the second the second one in, in Galicia, and you can be directed to this. At the moment, there is no possibility of having one calculation half in Galicia, half in Barcelona. So you are assigned to, to one of these. And if 
once, if, if the first time they give you time, they give you Barcelona, the next time you ask, you can ask to be, to still be in Barcelona. Because if you make a nice proposal and you are a good person, and now I will find which is a good person, then you can ask for a continuation. The first continuation is more or less given. The second is not evident, but what do you? What do I mean with being a good person? Being a good person is, of course, to complete all the time. If they give you one million hours, you cannot just run thousand hours and say goodbye. If you don't take all the time they give you, you will be penalized next time. And if you have four months for this this million, more or less, you can make two two thousand. You can you can make two 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 hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred. I mean, you have to distribute more or less. This is to be good. What you cannot do is the first month do nothing, the second do nothing, the third do nothing. And the half of the poor do nothing. And in the last days, you send all you can do in order to consume the time to be a nice people. So they see that and they get very angry with people doing that. And every, uh, I think it's every week, you can send a small, um, a small message telling that you're okay, telling that everything is working. Okay. Huh? Because if you don't send this, this, uh, this just confirmation that you are aware of it, that you have time and uh, you have this time available, huh? they will deactivate you. In order, people with V hours can calculate. So uh, this is free, but uh, this is not uh, do what you want. Not do what you want. Yeah. Okay. If this is not the case, ah, the okay. Yes, uh, I would like to know there is some possibility as a physics uh, so they can utilize this type of computing in for their research. Oh. To visit, you say? No, no, for uh, like uh, I am a physicist, so I would like to know there is some uh, thing possibility or some school uh, area, how I can use this type of thing for my research. You just uh, go to you just go to this to this electronic address and create a new account and then when you create your new account you can submit a proposal. So uh, the proposal the proposals are running all the time. So the time starts in November. So the assignation <coughs> starts in November for four months. So it's November, December, Jan January, February. So uh, the next one will be in March. You can apply now. If they give you the time, you will have it in March. March, April, May, July. So if you apply after March, you will be granted the time in after July. So it's always open. But uh, depending on the period of the month that you apply, you will have the resources in the next period. Yeah? And uh, for computing time, it's good. Because it's not so long time, it's four months. But for this kind of, um, for this data services, you have to be careful because one call for a year. So you can call, you can apply now, but until next year, you will not have uh, the resources. So it's open in November. So I think now it's closed or more or less closed. So uh, if you want to apply next month, you will be granted in next November, November 2023. It's okay. 
Okay, so before closing the session, Ines and I would like to thank Alberto for the scientific, the computing support and the funding also, which is important. So thank you very much and thank you very much for the It's talk. my pleasure.